Hello everyone and now welcome to a Warcraft Rumble talent overview, this time for the Beast Faction. I wasn't planning on making this video, but a couple of my guild mates were, were asking me to go through all the talents and I said, sure, why not? Um, so if you guys, well, enjoy it, leave a like, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. If you don't like it, well, you got here to just trash talk me anyways. Anyways, let's go ahead and break things down. First thing we're going to be looking at is Old Murkai. Old Murkai, you have Tip of the Spear, Tidehunter spawn at Old Murkai's location instead, Marathon of the Murlocs, or Electric Eels. Um, I personally like Marathon of the Murlocs or Electric Eels. Both of those are very, very strong. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to either temporarily stun, which is always useful, or um, trying to manage your gold during the the Murloc time for old Murkai is a little bit of a is a little bit of a tricky situation. So it gives you five extra seconds, and you normally don't want everything to be spawning at Murkai's location anyways, since he's often gonna be in the front and all of that splash damage is gonna end up well, wiping out your Murlocs before you can really big build a big counter push. So Marathon of Murlocs or Electric Eels. Um, generally, if you're going for PVE, I would say Marathon of Murlocs just because it's situational, but you can always uh, continue that strong push. Uh, next, moving on, we're going to Sharglar Razor Flank. And Sharglar um, heard hero ability is one of the strangest ones um, because of how she works. Um, her, her ability makes every mini that you cast actually cost the same amount. So um, you have to be very specialized with a Sharglar Razor Flank. And because of that, um, I would say either Nature's Grasp or Cavernous Miss. You do not want to grab the Spirit Passage because nothing feels worse than having no good option for, um, for your next choice as it costs five gold and you have to play uh, like a low cost um, a low cost mini if it, there's not a very strong counter. So no real reason um, to even be playing a five cost. Cavern miss means that um, Shoglar is also now a, uh, is now cheaper. So it makes all of your other minis cheaper as well because you're using well, a lower cost. Nature's grasp um, is good if you're trying to play a defensive game and in <coughs> excuse me. If you're going for um, PVE, I would go for Nature's Grasp. If you're going for Caverner, Cavernous Mist, which is, I got to admit, very difficult to do in in PVP, uh, Cavernous Mist is going to be better, but it, it's just so dangerous because of how PVP is currently working out. So, yeah, I, I would say um, Nature's Grasp or Caverner Mist, but Sharglar Razor Flank, probably not going to be the, the hero or the champion that you want to be leading your beast faction. Hogger is going to be the way to go. Unfortunately, I do not have Hogger, um, but Hogger, I would say the the one that increases his hit points and at, or increases um, his abilities every single time he is played. That is the better way to go. He gets a little bit more hit points. He gets stronger. And that's what you pretty much want from Hogger's passive ability as well. Just continue to uh, well roll over units faster. And if you happen to have Heroes Resolve, as we currently do in the PvP schedule, Hogger just becomes a bit of a beast at a level 11 or level 12, five levels higher than the base level. And if you can give him armor, suddenly he's just tanking damage like no one's business. And well, it's nearly impossible to try and take him out. Moving right along, moving on to Harpies, we have Infectious Swipes, Trinket Collectors, and Talon Dive. And I would say this is a toss-up between Infectious Swipes or Trinket Collectors. Infectious Swipes has given me so many, so many easy kills um, later on in, uh, well, later on in PVE. With unbound targets such, um, unbound targets, you can kind of place a unit to tank and then the harpies who are very much glass cannons can get in those swipes by getting in those swipes and applying poison you know, that poison damage really adds up over time and you can just go ahead and take them out the trinket collectors and um, it does work um, it does increase their cost though so um 
it, it becomes a little bit of a weird situation. Um, gaining the minor trait is always good, but that one additional cost almost is a setback. Are you really going to be collecting enough gold um, with those harpies to, to make up for it? In PvP, yes, you are because of how the way the map works, but in PvE, um, it's going to be a little bit more rare. So um, I would say PvP, Trinket Collectors works. PvE, go ahead and go for those Infectious Swipes. Um, one thing to note, though, in PvP, the map constantly changes. Right now, we've only seen, or the general public has only seen one PvP map, but there are a lot of other maps which makes it easier for um, your Cobalt Miner to actually gain access to those mining nodes. Well, more on that later when... Well, those maps are released into into the rotation. Quillbore. Um, this is the two-cost, unbound, resistant tank. He is an absolute, absolute beast. I love him. He's able to deploy anywhere on the map. And because he is resistant, you can actually place him behind enemy lines against those rather powerful ranged um, elemental um elemental minis and he can tank that damage while your front line isn't able to take them out so very very strong uh, personally i do like tunnel vision he, it does get out um, a little bit faster bristleback doesn't work out nearly as much you don't want your quill bore to really be um to really be tanking the melee attackers it's very rare that you're going to have elemental melee attackers and um, they're really much stronger than stronger or quill is much stronger against elementals and then bramble burst well poison is always useful if um, you run a particular dungeon that has that poison bonus so i would say tunnel vision followed by bramble burst followed by bristleback those three all very all very strong uh, generally quill his utility is already so high that there's um, that the the talents um, don't push him into the stratosphere because he's just already so gosh darn good. Murloc Tide Hunters. Their safety bubble, careful aim, and more locks. I personally like careful aim. That additional plus two range um, allows those Murlocs to often kill a target before it gets within. Me uh, melee range a uh, dragon whelp eggs i'm looking at you um as even with more locks that additional one murloc ends up getting cleaned up so um always situational safety bubble um deploy with a bubble that blocks the first attack there's so many attacks that do damage over time um the the there's some flame attacks there is sneeds swiping um, swiping attack, those all do deal damage a little bit over time, and the safety bubble instantaneously pops on the first contact and then moves on again. Um, all right, let's continue to go down the list here. We have spiderlings, we have bloated carapace, uh, frostbite, and in venom. Um, spiderlings for me is just like the harpies, I have won so many um, difficult PVEs because of that poison damage. Um, deal twice as much poison damage. Um, I like that anytime you're able to deal more damage for a little bit of a last last bit, that's great. Bloated carapace, it explodes on death, poisoning nearby enemies. Well, um, oftentimes I, I get what I get safe piloted on my spiderlings or AOE damage is ranged AOE damage. It doesn't get to do its thing at all. So um, might as well use in Venom. Frostbite, Game Frost, you're able to slow the units down. It is useful um, as well, but you really want to be able to deal significant damage and finish off the unit. If you, if you use Spiderlings with Smoke Bomb, it actually works out incredibly well. You're able to get that attack in, get that poison damage, and with the proper upgrade um, or the talent, you can also increase the level of the Spiderling, which increases the amount of damage it does. All right, Angry Chickens. Um, personally, I like Walking Crate. Walking Crate is is i believe head and shoulders above everything else snacrifice makes it so that only it is only useful for other beasts um other in in a beast deck and the furious foul I and mean, gain fury well it's not it is scary but because of how much angry chickens are a walking glass cannon 
um, one spell, one AOE, that that you know that furious foul, that fury. If you are already getting overwhelmed by the flock of angry chickens, um, well, it's just a winning more situation. Walking crate, you're able to deploy it, and then once it's destroyed, the chickens emerge and and engage. So it's not going to be targeted by a single spell. A safe pilot can't crash land on it and wipe out all the chickens. It will only destroy the box. And then the chickens will be able to take out the safe pilot. Same thing with um, execute. Same thing with um, arcane blast. Things of that nature. Moving right along. Null brute. Rabid. Reduce the cost by one and gain the cycle trait. Pillage and thick hide. Um, I would do, have this be a toss-up. Well, all, first of all, all three of these are very good. Um, if you can get the Null Brute and and give it the Cycle trait, and it does go well in, in one of those low-cost cycling decks. You're just able to deploy him. He is strong. He has strong AoE, and you're just able to place him down. Thick Hide also works very well. Gaining armor, he's able to tank those towers. So those are the two that I would um, I would use the most. Pillage, only only um, grab Pillage if you want to put him in the Sneed deck and you want that extra little bit of Pillage bonus when taking down towers, but a Pillage is a distant third. Prowler, on the Prowl, gain Stealth and stun the target when attacking from Stealth. Um, Amazing uh, pack leader grants nearby beast allies 30% additional damage or predatory instincts deal double damage to enemies who are at more than 75% health. I personally like on the prowl in second place, I would put in predatory instincts and then finally um, that pack leader. You rarely want for pack leader or you rarely want a talent that only fits really in one deck. So that's why I. I'm, I'm stepping back with Pack Leader. Um, on the Prowl, gaining stealth, being able to stun the target. And as you're stunning the target and ambushing the target, you often kill the target and then move on, regain stealth again, and do it again. That's how fast and how and how powerful the Prowler is. Predatory Instincts, um, it's very good at, well, taking the initial hit points off of large tanks. So uh, Abomination, I'm currently looking at you. Being able to deal double damage for more than one or two hit. Um, predatory instincts also very good at cleaning up those uh, cleaning up those middle of the road uh, melee units as they they can go from 100% hit points down to zero pretty much instantaneously. Um, both are good there, but gaining that stealth ensures that you're always going to get the first shot off, anyways. Polymorph. Uh, now, Polymorph is one of those spells that is useful uh, or it is almost like heart-wrenching when it's used by uh, used against you. But when you try to use it, its mileage varies greatly. So I haven't used Polymorph very much. If I'm going to have a spell, I want a spell that's effective against towers. And that way I can perhaps blast my opponent's tower towers and try and backdoor. But with Polymorph here, you have Golden Fleece, Exploding Sheep, and Stable Transfiguration. Um, I would say Exploding Sheep is the best. Um, Golden Fleece, you're, um, you're only refunding back that one bit of gold. And what, what you would probably want the most is um, well, finishing off the units that are, that are all you know, that are all there. So Exploding Sheep, killing a sheep damages nearby enemies. And then perhaps you can well finish all of them off if enough of them chain reaction explode all right vultures talents can be per or uh, tendon rip attack dazes enemies for three seconds feeding frenzy it gains bloodlust for five seconds um, or migration additional vultures sp um, all additional vultures spawn at your base um, this is one of those situations where i like tendon rip the most being able to daze is very strong Feeding Frenzy, the flock gains bloodless for five seconds when spawning a new vulture. Um, all very situational. In PvE, there are certain maps where it is helpful, but because those vultures are a bit of glass cannons, well, they're often easily taken out. You'd, I'd rather be able to daze my, en my enemy's units for a little bit of time, keep my units alive, and rebuild on that momentum. Finally, Migration. Um, well... Because all of those vultures spawn at your base, you can almost create an endless, endless flow of these vultures. 
and you're not pushing in one giant push, but I, I don't see migration being the most um, the the most useful out of the three. Raptors, strength in numbers, fast food, and motivation. All right. I would say strength in numbers by far, head and shoulders, the best. Raptors, you're able to place them out and just have them grow in numbers, have them be strong. And if you build the right deck, you can cycle back around and place more Raptors again. Um, it's one of those glass cannon type strategies. They are strong in, strong in heavy numbers and unchallenged. But I got to say, you got to be careful. There is so much AOE in, in Warcraft Rumble that often a go-wide strategy just doesn't seem to work. A lot of balancing is still needed, I think, for the game as, well, PvE and PvP both introduce their own sets of problems. All right, and that is going to be it. So if you guys like what you saw, um, leave a comment. And let me know what you guys thought about my um, migrating on the talents below. Until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.